ruthless in the face of tyranny and the other evils they have planned for you. Stay tuned and I'll tell you more. Welcome to another episode of Behind the Deep State, folks. I am your host, Alex Newman for The New American Magazine. I'm so glad you could join us today. And folks, if you have been following the news, which I don't necessarily recommend, it's mostly psychological terrorism aimed at the American people. But if you've been following the news, you probably noticed that a bunch of unhinged fanatics want to take your guns. And it's all for the best of reasons. Right uh, After a series of mass shootings in our country, uh, many of them perpetrated by Democrats, uh, in one case by a self-proclaimed authoritarian leftist, the, the racist who shot up the grocery store in Buffalo, who incidentally was communicating with a retired FBI agent for a while over the internet. Seems to happen a lot. I don't know what exactly that means. But uh, anyways, lots of leftists, Democrats, uh, uh, radical extremists, uh, falsely portrayed by the fake media as conservatives and Trump supporters and Fox News viewers. Uh, now the deep state propaganda machine is going crazy over guns. And they just want common sense, reasonable gun control. They're, they're not really coming to take your guns, except actually, yeah, they are, folks. They want to come take your AR-14s. Wait, 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 wait. Take the AR, your AR-14s. And all right, folks, before, before we even get to guns, I want to start with a trap that the deep state has laid here. Uh, they're laying out two options for how we deal with these mass shootings. Option one is gun control, and we infringe on your right to keep and bear arms, which, of course, is flatly and plainly unconstitutional. Option two is more mental health. In other words, we're going to stuff more taxpayer money into the pockets of the same big pharma gangsters that just did what they did to us over the last two years. Go back and watch our episodes on the COVID and the injections and all the rest of it. Uh, folks, giving these people more money is like giving an arsonist more gasoline and matches. The last thing in the universe that the big pharmaceutical companies need is more taxpayer money. Uh, but this is the trap, right? This is what the deep state always does. They create a problem or they manufacture a problem, or they exploit a problem, and then they give you two options. And it's always the same thing. Heads, they win. Tails, you lose. And so that's where we are now. Either heads, we give more money to the big pharmaceutical companies, put more people on crazy drugs, lock more people up in uh, insane asylums, and take away more freedom under the guise of mental health, or we take away your guns and remove your right to defend yourself, or some combination of the two if we're going to do a compromise, right? Folks, it's a trap. Now, we just recently, just uh, very recently, did a whole episode of this show on the weaponization of big psychiatry against freedom. Uh, the deep state has weaponized and is continuing to weaponize the psychiatric industry to undermine freedom, to undermine national sovereignty, to undermine uh, dissidents and more. Go back and watch that episode if you haven't watched it yet. Uh, we're not going to spend a lot of time dwelling on that today because we just covered that. But uh, incidentally, I, I just want to point this out before we move on. Uh, a lot of these, if not most of these mass shooters are actually on these dangerous psychotropic drugs that these mental health advocates want to put more people on. And if you actually open up the box and you read the warning label, a lot of them will tell you in plain English, may cause suicidal ideation, may cause homicide ideation. Uh, folks, you need to do your research. So many of these mass shooters were on these drugs, and I think there's a very, very serious correlation. Uh, now, correlation doesn't always necessarily equal causation, but they've lost a lot of court cases, and I've interviewed experts on this subject. They will tell you that these pills very often contribute to the kind of mass shootings and other issues that we see. But let's focus on guns for a little while, folks. Uh, Canada, our totalitarian neighbors to the north, under the leadership of Justin Castro, I mean Justin Trudeau, uh, is now going for broke. They want to ban. And, uh, handguns. They want to make all your magazines uh, five round uh, clips. And uh, so that's what they're doing up in Canada, where they have less freedom and less constitutional protections than we do. Uh, but of course, the totalitarians want the exact same thing in America, and they are losing their minds, no pun intended, trying to get it. Uh, Day, uh, what's his name? The, the weirdo from Texas, Beto O'Rourke. Uh, just uh, did this emotional outburst in a press conference by uh, Governor Greg Abbott. I want you to watch this. Check this out. Excuse me. Excuse me. Excuse me. <laughs> sit down. You're out of you're out of line and an embarrassment. Sit down. I don't like this. The next shooting is right now and you're doing nothing. No. You need to give it out of here. This is place to talk this over. This is totally predictable when you Sir, you're out of line. Sir, you're out of line. Sir, you're out of line. Please leave this auditorium. I can't believe you're a sick <laughs> would come to a deal like this to make a political issue. It's on a like you. Why don't you get out of here? Bye, folks.
folks. So, I mean, speaking of mental health issues, uh, as somebody ought to check out Beto. Uh, also, uh, Matthew McConaughey or Q or Hi, whatever his name is, some Holly weirdo, uh, also was at the White House begging for more gun control. And, you know, I, I think there's several things that are pretty interesting and pretty ironic here. Literally the same people who claim to be so concerned about children dying at the hand of guns. These are the same people who cackle with glee as they appropriate more of our tax money to murder millions of unborn babies. Yes, I said it, and yes, it's true. The very same people that want to take your guns are the very same people that want to take your tax money and use it to butcher little babies in their mother's womb. And I say the only real difference between the babies being butchered in their mother's womb and the babies being uh, shot and killed by terrorists with cars and things like that is that you can hear the screams of the victims who are outside the womb. And so, frankly, I'm not buying the Democrats' crocodile tears. When they show some concern for the lives of the unborn, maybe we can take them a little bit more seriously. But uh, all that to say, folks, that the Rhino establishment is getting ready to stick a knife in your back. They're preparing it right now as we're recording this video. Uh, the Rhino leader of of the rhinos in the Senate. Mitch McConnell has ordered his minion, Senator Cornyn of Texas, to go negotiate with the Democrats on gun control. Woke companies are lining up to promote gun control. And of course, uh, House Democrats are actually working right now, and probably by the time you watch this video, the bill will have already been passed, uh, what they're dishonestly characterizing as a gun safety bill. Uh, among other things, this bill rages the age to be able to purchase a firearm. So you can go die in a war for neocons on the other side of the planet. And yeah, you can carry all the heavy, you can drive a tank, you can launch missiles, but when you get home, no, sorry, you can't have a gun because we can't trust you with a gun. Hmm, interesting how that works. Uh, also, they want to uh, ban what they dishonestly describe as high capacity magazines. In fact, these are actually just standard capacity magazines. They're also demanding so-called safe storage of your firearms so that when someone breaks into your house in the middle of the night and threatens your family, you can fumble around with your safe to try to get your firearm out. Yep, that'll be really, really handy. Uh, and, of course, they're trying to expand background checks. They want to uh, force you to have a background check to be able to print certain shapes out of your 3D printer or to make certain things in your garage. So uh, they want to expand background checks. And, folks, uh, don't be deceived into thinking that these are just background checks, okay? The federal government has been exposed over and over and over again, keeping records and logs of everybody purchasing firearms. Even though federal law prohibits that, even though the Constitution prohibits that, they're still assembling millions, if not billions, of firearm ownership records so that they can have a total gun registry. And we all know what happens with gun registries, right? They use them to confiscate firearms later on. It has happened all over the world, and I guarantee you it will happen here if we let them do it. So what happens in the Senate with this piece of gun control remains to be seen. Um, they say that it's going to be a little tougher to get through the Senate. Maybe there'll be a filibuster, but right now it's 50-50 Democrats and Republicans. So we'll have to see what happens in the Senate. But folks, do not count on rhinos like Mitch McConnell, like Mitt Romney, uh, and even some of them who aren't quite as obvious to protect your gun rights. That is not a good strategy. We'll talk some about strategies in a moment. But folks, all this is happening while crime is extreme exploding. Okay, crime is going through the roof. Uh, Pro-life institutions and churches are being firebombed by domestic terrorists. So we had one in Wisconsin recently. Just another one happened to today as we're filming this. We've got Antifa terrorizing our communities. They've taken over a police precinct in Seattle and turned it into part of their chaz. Okay, we've got a police precinct in Minneapolis being burned to the ground. And so, yeah, folks, hand over your firearms. Okay. Meanwhile, you got George Soros funded prosecutors releasing violent criminals onto the street so that they can make space in the jails for people who violate their crazy COVID regulations, for people who uh, disobey their unconstitutional gun control rules. Yeah. Imagine that, folks. Gangbangers. Yeah. For you're free to go. Right. Uh, it's just society that's oppressing you. Uh, Law abiding gun owners. Yeah. You need to hand over those guns or we're going to put you in a cage, folks. Uh, this is simply unbelievable. Now, I want to share a little bit of uh, personal experience here, folks. I grew up in Mexico. I lived in Mexico longer than any other place in the world. And uh, one of the things that is really obvious in Mexico is that crime is out of control and murder is out of control. In fact, uh, Mexico has a murder rate 
that is many times higher than the murder rate in the United States. Cartels literally shoot at police officers. They leave dead bodies with severed heads hanging from bridges. Uh, they pose as police and block off roads. They they have a, a little saying, they call it plomo o plata, right? Where they tell the politicians and the cops and the judges, either you take the, the plomo, which is the lead, right? In other words, they'll fill you up with bullets, or you take the plata, the money, the silver. And uh, in that case, you could just take the bribes and you can go on living your life. Just pretend not to see the incredible out of control crime. So that's Mexico, folks. And um, guns are everywhere, even though guns are completely and totally banned. It is essentially impossible for a civilian, law abiding or not, to obtain a firearm legally. And that's by design. So uh, we after Mexico, we moved to Brazil for a little while. Same story. Very difficult to get firearms for private civilians. Lots and lots of crime. And then after that, we went to Switzerland. Now, Switzerland was really interesting. One of the things that I thought was so interesting, and it struck me right as we got there, you know, we'd ride the trains around. And every weekend, you'd see guys and, and even kids with, you know, fully automatic machine guns slung over their shoulders. And people didn't even think it was weird. You're just like, really? Just You just got on the train with a fully automatic machine gun? And, and no one is even batting an eye? That's weird. Uh, well, it turns out in Switzerland, their idea of gun control has been for a very long time. Uh, when you turn 18, if you are a man, the government will give you a fully automatic machine gun and or a pistol. Now, for perspective in America, you can't even get a fully automatic machine gun unless you jump through a bunch of ATF hoops and get special licenses and pay special taxes and give them your fingerprints and all the rest of the nonsense. So in Switzerland, you turn 18, you get a fully automatic machine gun. In America, you can't have a fully automatic machine gun pretty much under any circumstances unless you're willing to jump through all of the ATF's crazy hoops. Uh, and what does it look like in Switzerland? Well, uh, I'm happy to report Switzerland has the lowest murder rate of any major country in the world. And yet almost every Swiss home with a man in it has a fully automatic. And, and it wasn't weird, guys, to go into a home and just see a fully automatic machine gun propped up in the corner. Maybe it was up in the closet. Sometimes it'd be hanging out in, uh, on top of the kitchen cabinet. Uh, this was not weird at all. And the box of ammunition would be right next to it. And guess what? People didn't shoot each other. The murder rate was uh, almost nothing non-existent. The crime was almost non-existent. And somehow all these firearms are just sitting around not shooting people. Something very significant happened here, folks. And I'm telling you, the reason we have, and America used to be like that too, folks. America, we used to have uh, firearms absolutely everywhere. A seven-year-old could order a fully automatic machine gun out of the Sears catalog back in the 1930s. And guess what? We didn't have mass shootings. In fact, until the 1980s, 1990s, mass shootings were virtually unheard of in America. And yet firearm ownership was far more prevalent. Guns were easy to access. You didn't have to do background check. You didn't have to do all this silly stuff. You just had to buy a firearm, right? Uh, and what changed, folks, is not the availability of firearms. What changed is the depravity of our culture. Our children right now are being brainwashed in government schools to believe that uh, life has no purpose, there is no God, there is no right and wrong. The highest value in life is to just go out and seek as much pleasure as you could possibly obtain and minimize the amount of pain. And so this is what our kids are being taught, folks. We can look at the fruit and we can see where this is coming from. And I want to talk about one more country, uh, Venezuela. What a sad, sad story. Uh, civilians there were disarmed about a decade ago with help from the United Abominations, sorry, the, the United Nations. And uh, now they have a murder rate that is about 20 times as high as the murder rate per capita in the United States. So you, if you want to see how well gun control works, I encourage you to take a trip down to Venezuela and uh, tell Mr. Maduro hello for me and uh, just go walk down the streets and see uh, how safe you feel, folks. Uh, again, guns are not the problem. In fact, Guns have been shown to be a very positive force. Uh, one of the people who's done a lot of the research on this, former anti-gunner, a scholar named John Lott with the uh, Center, or excuse me, the Crime Prevention Research Center. Uh, he actually studied this. He wrote a book called More Guns, Less Crime. And what he found in his studies is that there is a very strong correlation between the prevalence of guns in civilian hands and a reduction in crime. In fact, a study in the Harvard Journal of Law and Public Policy also found more guns in private hands reduce crime. And folks, if you put your thinking caps on for just a moment, this will make a lot of sense to you. Criminals don't obey laws, right? Criminals and mass murderers don't obey laws against murder. They don't obey laws against theft. They don't obey laws against rape. Anybody who thinks criminals are going to obey your gun-free zone sign or your gun control regulations is absolutely kidding themselves. In fact, criminals would much rather have disarmed victims, and they know that law-abiding citizens 
are the only ones who will obey these silly gun control mandates. Now, folks, the U.N. has been banging the war drums against our right to keep and bear arms in America for many years. In fact, right now they're seeking an arms trade treaty that would drastically regulate and and eventually obliterate the right to keep and bear arms all over the world. Uh, And in fact, uh, the U.N.'s minions have repeatedly described our right to keep and bear arms as a human rights violation. Yep, they consider your right to defend yourself a human rights violation. Uh, but I want to consider, because the, the United Abominations has a lot of governments there that really do love gun control, right? North Korea is a really great example. Communist China, uh, Cuba, right? These are all, uh, Venezuela, these are all nations that have stripped their citizens of the right to keep and bear arms. And uh, just for some perspective, folks, uh, you know, the, the estimates suggest that governments murdered more than 100 million of their own people in the 20th century. And I want you to digest that number for a minute. That's not counting the hundreds of millions of people who died in wars started by governments. That's just the people that governments murdered of their own populations. Now take all the mass murderers, all the mass shooters in all of human history combined, and we're not talking about a drop in the bucket compared to all the blood shed by the mass murdering totalitarian regimes of the 20th century. Okay. Um, Now, Those of you who think that gun control might keep you safe from a mass shooting, all you need to do is look at other countries. Okay, Uh, France and Norway have just recently suffered from mass shootings. In fact, in Norway, 70 plus children were murdered by a lunatic with a firearm. Firearms are very, very difficult to get in Norway, almost impossible to get in France. And yet terrorists and mass murderers who don't obey murder laws somehow didn't obey the gun regulations. I wonder why. And let's not forget about just a couple months ago in Wisconsin, folks, during the Christmas parade when uh, more than a couple months ago, it was a few months ago. But uh, a terrorist actually mowed down and murdered numerous elderly women and even children. So obviously, uh, people can commit mass murder without firearms. But I also want you to notice, folks, that every mass shooting has something pretty significant in common. It doesn't stop until somebody with a gun shows up to stop it. Now, in uh, Texas, at this uh, mass shooting at the school, it took an hour because the police sat outside and they actually handcuffed and tased parents who wanted to go in and protect their children. It actually took a guy at a barber shop to grab a shotgun and head over there and put a stop to this. But notice, folks, these mass shootings always end the same way. Uh, and typically, when a armed individual shoots a would-be mass shooter, the media doesn't even cover it, especially the national media. They are not interested in that at all because it disrupts their fraudulent narrative. But uh, folks, in Texas and in all these other mass shootings, notice they almost always take place in gun-free zones, uh, one armed teacher, one armed parent, one armed janitor could have put a stop to this whole thing and saved countless lives. So the solution, folks, is not to give up your guns, right? Uh, The Second Amendment, says that your right to keep bear arms shall not be infringed. That's pretty plain language. Shall not be infringed means shall not be infringed. In fact, the founding fathers also said that this was necessary for the security of a free state. Anybody who wants to disarm you is, whether knowingly or unknowingly, undermining the security of our free state. Now, the founding fathers also wanted a well-regulated militia. They understood that every able-bodied man was to be part of the militia. Every able-bodied man should be armed with military weapons, and every able-bodied man should be trained in how to use them. And if the need arises, God forbid, then those men should be called out into the service of their community or of their state, or in in certain emergencies, even the national government to repel uh, invasions, to put down insurrections, et cetera. That's what the Constitution says. And so I think we need to get back to that understanding. Instead of trying to undermine the rights to keep and bear arms, we need to revive the right to keep our arms. We need to recognize it's not just about protecting yourself from criminals, even though that's important. It's not just about duck hunting or sport shooting. Uh, It is about protecting our states and our nations and our communities and our liberties from anybody who would infringe on our rights. Now, folks, these are God-given rights, okay? Uh, As the father of American independence, Sam Adams put it, And an incredible document on the rights of the colonists circulated through the committees of correspondence in 1772. This is what he said. Among the natural rights of the colonists are these. First, a right to life. Second, to liberty. Thirdly, to property, together with the right to support and defend them in the best manner they can. Folks, this has to include modern weaponry. 
And folks, if you think this murder thing is a new problem, uh, you ought to go open up your Bible, right? Um, Cain and Abel. Do Cain and Abel come to mind? Uh, folks, AR-15s did not exist during Cain and Abel's time. And notice that God blamed the rock for oh, Wait, no, he didn't, right? Because that's stupid, of course. Okay, uh, Jesus actually commanded his followers in Luke chapter 22, verse 36. He commanded his followers to go buy a sword. And if they couldn't afford it, he said, go sell your cloak. This is what he said. Jesus said to them, but now let the one who has a money bag take it and likewise a knapsack and let the one who has no sword sell his cloak and buy one. So theologians have debated the precise meaning of that over the centuries. But folks, to me, it's pretty clear. God wants people to be armed and we should be. We must not give one single inch on firearms. The deep state doesn't want to keep you safe. The deep state doesn't want to protect children. The deep state wants to make you defenseless like they did to the people in China, like they did to the people in Cuba, like they did to the people in Nazi Germany, like they did to the people in the Soviet Union and Angola and Mozambique and North Korea. And I could go on and on so that they can treat you exactly the way they have treated those populations, like a slave. We must say no. Under no circumstances, will you be able to infringe on our right to keep and bear arms? And if they try, we need our state governments, we need our sheriffs, we need our local governments, we need our county governments to stand in the gap and say, no, nobody's gonna be infringing on the rights of our people in our jurisdiction. In fact, our founding fathers said, and our constitution says that, uh, or our declaration of independence says that the purpose of government is to protect the rights of the people. One of the rights of the people is the right to keep and bear arms. So when the government tries to go after your rights, it is not only not fulfilling its purpose, it is waging war on the very reason for which it was established. It becomes illegitimate. It becomes a usurper. And again, we must rely on our state and local authorities to protect our rights. Thank you for tuning in, folks. I am Alex Newman. This is Behind the Deep State. Please share this video out. Don't let people fall for the lies of the deep state in their effort to take your guns. Thanks again. Until next time, God bless you all.